Well, good afternoon, Mr. Vice President, Commissioner Hahn, Governor DeSantis, Governor, no, Congressman Diaz Ballot, other distinguished guests. It is truly a distinct honor and pleasure to extend a heartfelt welcome to you, to the University of Miami's Middle School of Medicine. I would like to thank each of you for your continued support, partnership, and tireless effort as we navigate the impact of COVID-19 on our community, the university, and our health system. As I mentioned to the Vice President earlier, he could not have picked a better place to mark the start of the phase three COVID-19 vaccination trials. The Middle School of Medicine was Florida's very first medical school and is now home to South Florida's first and only NCI designated cancer center. And the Gordon Center where we are today is one of the crown jewels of the university. It is the home of the first cardiopulmonary simulator for medical education named Harvey. And that structure has helped train th tens of thousands of learners worldwide and continue to do so today. And as an institution whose overarching mission and singular focus is to be at the forefront of advances in clinical care, medical education, and translational medicine to improve the health of our nation. We are pleased to host you, Mr. Vice President, your first visit to a phase three clinical trial site in the nation. And it is now my pleasure to introduce our governor and a great friend of the University of Miami, Ron DeSantis. Well, thank you, Dean. You, the Florida, we had uh, an interesting situation with our budget. The budget was completed basically right before the 15 days to slow the spread was announced. And so it was done in a financial situation that obviously changed dramatically. We waited until the end of the uh, fiscal year to consider that budget. But the budget vetoes that I had to issue were historic. Uh, a billion dollars. I, I likened it to the Red Wedding version of, of line item vetoes. But even though we had to take off so much off the budget, we were able to support uh, the Sylvester Cancer Center here at the University of Miami. And I think that that's a testament to in one of the toughest years uh, to be able to be there uh, is a testament to the great work that's being done here uh, across the board. And with these clinical trials, it's even more exciting. I want to thank the Vice President. Uh, Vice President Pence has been a great friend of the people of Florida. Uh, he was down here. I remember early on when we met at the at the terminal with the cruise cruise ship uh, executives, and he's been down multiple times, always willing to lend a helping hand. Uh, and I'll tell you, it's it's been beneficial. Um, you know, we're encouraged by the most recent trends. Uh, yesterday, hospital admissions in the state of Florida for COVID-like illness was the lowest it's been since June. Uh, emergency department visits for COVID-like illness yesterday was as low as it's been uh, since the middle of June. Um, in Florida's case fatality rate is about 1.3%. It's one of the lowest case fatality rates in the country uh, amongst uh, large states. And part of the reason is some of the great work that our medical professionals are doing here at the University of Miami Health System. I learned in our roundtable for admitted hospital patients with COVID, uh, their fatality rate is 10% of the admitted hospital patients. That is incredibly great results uh, with a very difficult uh, disease. So I really want to thank the folks here who've been doing a great job saving lives and generating good patient outcomes. Part of the reason I think people have also generated better outcomes is some of the therapeutics that have been developed, including this new therapeutic remdesivir. This was sent out uh, to states a, a month or two ago um, when there was a more demand signal as more patients were coming into Miami hospitals. Uh, we needed to accelerate those shipments. I called the vice president and I think like 48 hours later it was all arriving uh, at the hospitals across the state. We've had to change the schedule to accelerate to make sure there was no gaps and the White House has been there uh, every time. So I wanna thank them for what they've done to be able to help our physicians have the, the remdesivir that they need to treat their patients. And then uh, finally, um, I'm really excited that the uh, federal government's sending point of care COVID diagnostic tests to nursing homes all across the country. And as many of you know, we've had uh, no visitations in nursing homes since middle of March. 
Uh, it was the right thing to do. We've done routine uh, daily screening of staffing. We're doing biweekly testing of staff. We've tested all the residents. Um, you know, we've obviously prohibited hospitals from sending COVID positive residents back to nursing homes. It's been a big focus that we've sent millions of PPE, masks, face shields, all this other stuff. But we haven't been able to figure out, okay, when can the, they be able to see their loved ones? Um, it's a tough balance, but I think with this point of care test, you will be able to potentially have the visitation resume where the family members can be tested, get an answer in 15 minutes, and then you get to go make that human connection. And all the steps we take, there's always costs on the other side. And we've done a lot to protect our nursing home residents. Uh, I think our, our uh, fatality rate there uh, is, is testament to that. But that has come at an emotional cost. It's, it's increased loneliness. And we can't just do that indefinitely. This is a way to maintain the safety and still work to keep the virus out of these very vulnerable areas while still giving people some personal nourishment and having the families connect again. So Mr. Vice President, thank you for being a part of that. Uh, we look forward to those landing at nursing homes throughout the state of Florida. Um, we wanna thank you again uh, for all you've done uh, to help us um, amongst along these uh, many difficult months. Uh, but I do think that there, there's a light at the end of the tunnel and a lot of that is due to your support. So thank you. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. I want to thank uh, Governor Ron DeSantis and his entire team for the seamless partnership that they've forged with our administration uh, since the early days of this pandemic. Uh, we've worked together to ensure that uh, Florida had the resources to do testing, that your hospital systems and incredible healthcare workers had had PPE ventilators, um, and we've also been uh, we've also been working to make those therapeutics like remdesivir available in increasing measure. But today is a historic day because today here at the University of Miami, we will begin the first phase three clinical trial for a coronavirus vaccine in the United States. 89 sites all across America with more than 30,000 participants will be a part of uh, this phase three clinical trial. But but coming here to the University of Miami uh, to be able to partner with uh, you, Dean Ford, and the entire team here uh, is a great privilege. And uh, President Trump wanted me to be here. Wanted me to be here first and foremost to say to the people of Florida that we are with you. Uh, we'll stay with you every step of the way. We're encouraged by the favorable trends here in Florida. Uh, but uh, we'll continue to make sure your healthcare workers have the resources to provide the level of care that any one of us would want a family member to be able to have. The level of care that's been being delivered here uh, at the University of Miami hospital system every day during the challenging days through which you have just passed. Uh, but today is a day of hope. Uh, today is a day of promise. Uh, and today is a day I think that, uh, uh, that uh, is a tribute uh, to uh, American ingenuity and to uh, President Trump's uh, relentless drive uh, toward achieving uh, medicines and a vaccine for the American people. It's remarkable to think that uh, the company that will begin phase three today, a company known as Moderna, actually was the first company in America to begin phase one clinical trials uh, back in the month of March. Uh, and as Dr. Stephen Hahn of the FDA may reflect in just a moment, that was in record time. Literally, it would just be a matter of weeks from when the United States first received the coding for the coronavirus that we were able to initiate an effort to develop a vaccine. And in 62 days, a period of time never heard of in vaccine development, we were able to go to phase one trial. But today here in Florida, we begin the first phase three clinical trial for a coronavirus vaccine, and we begin it. Uh, we begin it in a spirit of the same urgency uh, and the same hopefulness from which it began. We have moved at President Trump's direction at a historic pace. But as Dr. Hahn will also reflect, we are going to ensure that we move at a safe and effective pace. Uh, and I want to assure the people of Florida and people all across this country that we will cut no corners in the development of this or any vaccine. Uh, 
We're truly grateful uh, for the support of members of Congress in both political parties that have made more than $10 billion available. I want to thank Congressman Mario diaz Balart, who is with us today, as well as the uh, Florida delegation to the House and the Senate for their support. Because it's important to note that under Operation Warp Speed, we're not even waiting to the end of clinical trials to create the vaccines, whether it be Moderna or was announced last week with, uh, uh, with Pfizer. We're actually having these companies produce the vaccines as we speak. And as soon as they are confirmed to be safe and effective, we'll have tens of millions of doses able to distribute across the country. It is that initiative the president launched in Operation Warp Speed that is a reflection of, uh, of our commitment uh, to, to bring these medicines, to bring a vaccine to the American people just as soon as we can responsibly do it. But let me say, uh, let me say thank you again to just a few more folks. I want to thank Governor Ron DeSantis and his entire team uh, for your leadership during the trying days through which Florida has just passed and throughout this pandemic. Uh, it is a... Uh, uh, it is a tribute uh, to Governor DeSantis' uh, professionalism and to his heart that from very early on, Florida has leaned into this effort. And I particularly would commend uh, the governor's efforts to look after seniors who we've known from the beginning. Uh, seniors with serious underlying health conditions represented the most vulnerable to serious outcomes. And it was efforts here in Florida that really, really became a model for long-term care around the country and will continue, as the governor said, to support those efforts in the days ahead. I want to thank the University of Miami, not just uh, for being the site uh, of the first phase three clinical trial, but uh, just as much, uh, Dean Ford and your team here, for uh, everything that you've done throughout uh, this pandemic and in the, in the difficult weeks through which Florida has just passed, to have a separate COVID-only hospital uh, to be able to continue to operate your hospital for all the other healthcare needs in the community is a tribute to the innovation and effectiveness of the doctors, the nurses, and all the healthcare workers in this extraordinary facility. Uh, finally, I want to say thank you to all of those who have agreed to participate in this clinical trial. It is remarkable to think 30,000 Americans were willing to step forward and to participate in this uh, phase three clinical trial, uh, and they have our thanks. Uh, people who have volunteered to participate in this and other trials are doing more than their fair share uh, to help our nation through this challenging time, and they have our thanks. For anyone looking on who would like to be a part of either this clinical trial or other clinical trials for therapeutics or for vaccines, you can go to clinicaltrials.gov and be a part. That's clinicaltrials.gov, and you can get information how you can participate. But we all have a role to play. And, and we all know that each and every one of us, by practicing good hygiene, washing our hands, wearing a mask every time that state and local authorities indicate it's appropriate, or wearing a mask when you can't properly socially distance is how each of us can play a role. But for those Americans, literally more than 100,000 who've stepped forward and volunteered to participate in clinical trials around the country, you have our thanks as well. Uh, today, I said, is a, is a great day in America, uh, the first phase three clinical trial for a coronavirus vaccine. It begins here in Florida and in 89 different sites around the country, and it begins with the best uh, professionalism of our pharmaceutical companies in this country, American innovation, American creativity. It begins with the hopes, and I know the prayers, of the American people, and uh, I'm convinced more than ever on this great day uh, that... Uh, but we'll get through this. We will reach that day. I truly believe, as Dr. Fauci said not long ago, when if not, when, when not if, but when we will have a vaccine, we'll have it available to distribute to tens of millions of Americans and we'll reach that day when we finally can begin to put this coronavirus in the past. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Stephen Hahn uh, for his remarks and then, uh, and then really one of the uh, one of the leaders of the clinical effort here at the University of Miami, and we'll take a few questions. Dr. Hong. Thank you, Mr. Vice President and Dean Ford, and Dr. Dobucky Lewis, thank you for hosting us today. Um, in the early part of this pandemic, President Trump and Vice President Pence asked FDA uh, to make sure that we removed any unnecessary barriers to the development of medical products, um, and we have uh, followed that request. 
Uh, today, we are seeing the initiation of the first phase three clinical trial of a vaccine candidate. Um, and that is, as the Vice President said, a historic event in an incredibly short period of time. I want to thank uh, my colleagues, my medical colleagues who are in the front line taking care of patients, but also who put together this clinical trial and are helping to enroll patients and ensuring that it's done in the absolute highest quality way. It is a true sign of America's great biomedical research enterprise that we find ourselves here today. Normally, this process would take months and years. Um, it's the dedication of great medical professionals and researchers that we've gotten to this point. Conducting clinical trials are a crucial piece of our efforts to approve a vaccine for COVID-19. FDA has oversight over a number of clinical trials for both therapeutics and vaccines, in fact, over 140, with more than 450 therapeutics in the pipeline. And I want to thank, like the Vice President did, the Americans who've stepped forward to volunteer for these trials because they are our true heroes as we evaluate the efficacy and safety of a, of a, uh, of a vaccine. Now, the important scientific data that we will get from the phase three clinical trials, and this is, of course, one clinical trial that we're going to see, but several others are planning to go to phase three in the next several weeks. And the data that come from those clinical trials will allow FDA to do its important work to determine whether a vaccine is safe and effective. And we're doing everything we can at FDA to support that development by providing regulatory and scientific advice as well as technical assistance for how to conduct those clinical trials. The number of people that need to be in those clinical trials so that we can have confidence in the data, as well as to make sure that there's diversity in the clinical trial population, because we, what we want is to have generalizability of those results to the entire United States population. As I mentioned, we expect a number of additional trials to go into phase three in the next several weeks to months, and that's good news for the American people. As we laid out in our guidance regarding vaccines and in all of our actions through COVID-19, FDA scientists will not cut corners in order to evaluate a medical product, and that includes a vaccine. And I know that our colleagues performing these clinical trials want to have and must have confidence that we will do that as we evaluate the data that they generate for that vaccine. It's these scientists who will call the balls and strikes on approving a vaccine, and they will make their decisions based upon the data and science that's generated from these clinical trials. We will authorize or approve a vaccine solely on the basis of the data that we receive um, to, in the determination of safety and efficacy. So I really appreciate the leadership of the University of Miami and the other investigators around the country. Again, it's the truly great American research enterprise that allows us to get to this point. And Americans can have confidence in FDA that we will make the absolute best decision on their behalf. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Suzanne Doblecki Lewis. I'm the site principal investigator for the University of Miami site for the Coronavirus Prevention Network and uh, for the first phase three clinical trial of that network, which is the Moderna vaccine trial. Um, we're incredibly excited to begin this process um, here at the University of Miami. And we're really amazed and humbled by the number of volunteers who have already stepped forward uh, to, to be a part of this trial. And it's these volunteers, as the others said, who will make the difference and will allow us to know whether we do have a, an effective, safe vaccine that can move forward. Um, here at the University of Miami, we are very aware of the need to shape our enrollment to reflect our strength, which is the diversity of our population here, and particularly the diversity of people who are at high risk for COVID-19. Um, so we take that mandate very seriously. And uh, we'll plan to enroll 1,000 patients here. 500 will get the vaccine um, and 500 will get placebo. So will follow those patients very carefully for two years after the second injection of the vaccine. The vaccine consists of uh, two injections spaced 28 days apart. And we'll be following extremely carefully, checking for any symptoms of potential COVID disease um, and performing follow-up swabs and assessments um, to make sure that we completely understand the, the efficacy of the vaccine. So we're very, very happy uh, to be at this point and optimistic and looking forward to beginning our enrollment here. Thank you. Great.